to let everyone know about Jesus and his love. But will you listen? Hey, what is up, guys? It is your girl, Danya M. Walls, and we are back again with another Worship Wednesday. Um, and this is going to be extremely fun. And I, as I always say to you guys, I want your feedback. I want to know your thoughts on these scriptures and your ideas and your perspectives. Um, as you can tell, I'm in different scenery. However, um, I dare not miss a Worship Wednesday, right? But we are going to jump right in. Father, we thank you and we love you for this day. We thank you for this week. Father, we know that this is the week that we recognize our Savior's birth, um, Father. And there are so many things uh, that we need to, that we should be grateful for. So, Father, I pray right now that as we dive into your word, that you make it come alive because it is alive and it's breathing and it's moving and it works. Father, I pray right now for every person that is watching this believer and non-believer alike. Father, I pray that you would work on our hearts, that you will mend our hearts, that you will open the eyes of our hearts because we want to truly see you. And we thank you and we love you. In the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, amen. Amen. So I'm really excited, guys. So we are going to be talking about when the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary. Yes, I know. I know we were waiting for me to talk about the nativity story and it being no room in the end and all this other stuff. But y'all know, not that I'm not interested in those things, but I just, I had so many questions. And the questions were really like, yo, how would I handle if an angel of the Lord, let alone not any angel, but Gabriel, right? Someone who, uh, an angel who is deemed as the strongest angel, someone who is coined as an archangel, uh, the angel that don't always just come out the gate for any and everything, right? Um, how would I react if he came to me and I did not, you know, I was, I was engaged to my husband, um, uh, cause they were set to be married. So in, in that time, we, we can consider that like an engagement, right? But the Bible doesn't specifically talk about engagement, but arranged marriages set to be married is, is about the same jargon, um, I would think. Um, but I had never been with a man. And then this angel comes to me and tells me, hey, um, yeah, you're going to be with a child. Um, yeah, I would have been like, what? Um, but that's not what Mary did. And I thought it was very interesting. I do realize that there are two accounts of the story um, in Matthew and in Luke. I want to target Luke's uh, account of it. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Um, before we get into that, so that chapter is Luke uh, chapter 1. Um, the account of Mary, uh, the angel appearing to Mary, is verses 26 to 38. Um, but I want to read verses one through four because this is um, Luke's account um, as he's writing about the life of Jesus. And he is talking to Theophilus. Mm -hmm. Let's hope I said that name right. Um, he's writing this report. So this is exactly how he lays out before he goes into the account of Jesus. So many have tried to report on the things uh, that happen among us. They have written the same things that we've learned from others. The people who saw those things from the beginning and served God by telling people his message. Since I myself have studied everything carefully from the beginning, most excellent, uh, Theophilus, it seemed good for me to write it out for you. I arranged it in order to help you know that what you have been taught is true. And I love that because he's not saying to him, hey, I'm going to give you new information because people miss stuff. I'm going to tell you brand new stuff that you've never learned. He's saying, I'm giving you this account to let you know someone like me. Um, backstory to Luke. Luke was not a Jew. He was a Gentile who then um, became 
someone that got saved so his account is his accounts are totally different i also noticed in the book of luke that he takes special interest in like women characters and those people who will be deemed as like the outcast and all that other stuff he really tells their story right and really highlights them in a way that other accounts do not um so i really love this that he's like i'm laying this out for you okay but enough about luke here we go um so an angel appears to uh mary and and the very first thing he says to her right um he comes to her and he says greetings the lord has blessed you and is with you right now most of us will be like wow like that's you know there's nothing wrong with that the angel came to her and let her know off the bat like you are blessed and god is with you yeah right like let's be honest we hear a word from the lord and our our response may want to be joy and peace and depending on what that word is you begin to question it like what 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 does that mean what do you what do you mean i'm blessed and the lord is with me like you know especially when you feel like you are nobody and this angel is appearing to you or the Lord is talking to you. And that is exactly what happened to Mary, right? It says uh, in verse 29, but Mary was very startled by what the angel said and wondered what this greeting meant. I can agree, snaps, because I can agree with Mary. I probably would have been, I'm startled now when I hear stuff that God wants <laughs> wants me to do or when God sends a word to me I'm startled now so I can this I love this because Luke brings a very uh, realistic perspective um in this translation I'm sorry I did not say it because I'm super excited um I've never read this translation before this is actually new the new century version um but let me change because y'all know I'll be trying to the most I go is NLT so let's see what the NLT how the NLT puts it Okay, the NLT says, yeah, but Mary was very startled by what the angel said and wondered what this greeting might mean. Yes. Um, and then the angel goes on because right now he sees that this is, this is not Gabriel's first rodeo. Um, most of the time when angels appear to people, one of the most common statements that they say to them is fear not, be not afraid. You know, like, first off, it's probably because what an angel, okay? Um... But then he says to Mary, um, do not be afraid, Mary. God has shown you his grace. Listen, you will become pregnant. He goes right in. Like he's, <laughs> he's he ripped the bandit right off, right? Listen, <laughs> listen, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high God. The Lord God will give him a throne, give him the throne of King David, his ancestor. He puts that in there, right? That he will be a lineage of King David <clears throat> and he will rule over his people of Jacob forever and his kingdom will never end, right? He straight out the bat goes like, you're going to have a child. This is who he's going to be. And that also brought me some peace. I'm not a parent of my own, but it made me um, want to ignite my prayer. All right, God, you guide me. And, and, and naming my children and, and letting me know who my children are. So many times as parents, we don't realize um, if we don't seek God on who our children are and claim and call them and groom them to who God says our children are, we can do more damage than good, right? We can raise them in the right way, but if we're not raising them according to what God has called them to, sometimes it could deviate um, um, the process, right? Um, so, Nevertheless, okay, um, so after all of this, Mary says to him, what do you think Mary says to him? Because Mary did not know any man in the Bible sense. I think I might have said that already. Um, but if you don't know what that means, that means that Mary was never intimate. Mary wasn't a virgin. In the Bible, it, it, it's, the word is no. Um, she was a virgin. So it, as a virgin, you hear that you're going to be with a child. Your first question is, how will this happen since I'm a virgin? period. Like, that is it. Like, what? how is this going to happen? So then uh, Gabriel goes on and he explains exactly how this is going to happen. And then he says, um, then she says, this is the part that got me. This is the part that got me. 
she says, after he names everything, after he lays it out for her, right? And then, oh, before we go to what she says, um, as Gabriel is telling her everything, he also throws in there what God has done for her, her relative or her cousin. I don't know if it's her cousin. It just says your relative, um, Elizabeth, right? Whose womb was dried up and that God opened up her womb and that she's pregnant. And by this time she had been pregnant for six months, right? Um, he throws that in there because sometimes, right? And I know this is a, a very common cliche, especially in the black church that we say, you know, if God, if God can do it for them, he, he could do it for me. Right. And we say that, but I don't think sometimes we believe that. And I believe that this moment when the angel reveals to her what God has done for Elizabeth, it was that moment to let you know, like if God did this unbelievable thing this thing that seemed was deemed impossible and you know you heard of her story you're close to her your family you know of her concerns you know of all of these things if god did it for her what makes you think that he can't do it for you right um so he he tells her that little insert and then mary says blew me away and completely want i want to lord listen i want to change my prayer and I want to change more over my response, right? Because to, it's the response for me. <laughs> it is the response for me. And I'm sorry if I get a, a little emotional, but this is it. Mary says, I am a servant of the Lord. Let this happen to me as you say. And then the angel went away. I can't tell you how many times my response was not the way that Mary responded. And I'm, I'm pretty, I know for a fact there were a thousand things going on in, in her mind, right? Because there's always so much that goes on in our mind. There's all, all, all of the things that might happen. The, 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 in Mary's case, right? All right. God is saying this thing, but I'm set to be married to this guy. Uh, if he hears this, it's going to sound crazy, right? Like I probably would have instantly just gone into prayer, like God reveal it to him because I know coming from me, it will sound bonkers. Like I know, I know you have to tell him, right? That would have been my prayer. And then, um, then secondly, it's like all of the backlash from the town that she lives in, the people that she know. No one is going to believe this. People are going to believe that she was not pure, that she did not do the things that she needed to do to keep herself uh, for her husband. Um, and just so much. I'm pretty sure all of that was going through her head. But in all of those things, her being a servant of the Lord outweighed all of that. And that is my prayer for us today. That the fact that we are servants of the true and living God, the most high God, the God who is greater than anything that seems great, the God who can decline those declines, the God that does all of these things, that the fact that we are servants, that we are sons and daughters of him will outweigh any thought in our head any shortcomings, any anything we feel about ourselves and that our response will always be, God, I'm your servant. So whatever you say, even though I don't feel like I can do it, even though I don't feel like I'm, I'm capable of doing it, whatever you say, allow it to happen. And that is my prayer for myself. That is my prayer for you, right? Because had Mary declined it, what would the story be like? And that's the question that I ask myself all the time. God, if I don't do it, who won't receive you? Who, who am I neglecting? Who am I not allowing the opportunity to get to know you? But I want you to think about that. And in thinking about that, allow your prayer to be, God, shape me so that my response to you is always, I'm a servant and whatever you say, let it happen because I know that you'll guide me through this. So, Father, we love you today. We thank you for Mary and her obedience. We thank you for um, her being her yes and her response to you, despite what might have happened, despite what people said, because they did say things, despite the heartache and pain that she went through from boring the Messiah, seeing her son die on the cross, 
Father, but it is because of her, yes, that we have Jesus. I know you probably would have found another way, but you came to her. You came to her because you knew she would not deny you. Because you knew that her, her identity as a servant outweighed any other identity that society put on her or that might have been put on her. So, Father, I pray that same thing for us, that our identity as your sons and daughters and servants will outweigh any identity that have been placed on us, uh, 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 weak or insecure or all of these things. Father, I pray that our response will be we are servants and that you will allow whatever you say to happen to happen. Father, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you all. I pray that you have an amazing holiday and I pray that you think about that. Tell me what you think about that. Tell me what you think about Luke's account of, um, and you could even read the differences in Matthew um, and in Luke, the account when the angel appeared to Mary. And let me know, let me know your thoughts and what you think you might have said how you would have responded and let me know how your mind has shifted in seeing Mary's response. I love you all. Have a great day. Bye. Let everyone know about Jesus and his love.